Hey, it's Chris Duncan here, and I wanted to give you something really special today. This is a sneak peek and intro to look into day two of our three-day magnetic mind uh, training. Now, I, I can't give you the whole training. This is a this is a paid program, and it wouldn't make sense to do that anyway because there's a lot on day one that you need. However, I really feel that how I explained uh, how what resistance is and how the recode works and how the superconscious helps you to create a life you love. I, I feel like I explained it really well. So I've edited this up. Obviously, it's the first. It's a half of the second day. So I hope that you really enjoy it. Uh, so sit back and uh, and jump right into into this amazing session. And uh, and let me know if you love more content like this in the comments below. Uh, bye for now. Hey, welcome to to day two of the Magnetic Mind uh, three day experience. Now you, you might be new and go, oh, day two. Have I missed a day? Well, yes. However, it's coming around again very soon, and there's a replay. Okay. Last year, well, for the first three years of Magnetic Mind, we ran a three day event. And what became obvious last year when we were also doing the mastery events is there was just a lot of uh, times that people needed to have three days available, which, which is great. It's also uh, on many time zones. Uh, if, if someone has to get up super early or late, three days in a row is uh, definitely a lot harder then if we just created a different choice and said, we'll do one of the days uh, a month, each month, and everyone will get the same content in a much easier packet. Does that make sense? So it's the same event. Uh, instead of doing it all uh, in three, we've just broken it up into three separate days, uh, which means I think it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience. We're going to get the same amount out of it and easier to organize and those sort of things. Um, each day actually is able to be consumed uh, by itself, start to finish. They're, they're all separate themes. And, uh, and so you're able to, to start at the third day or the second day. It doesn't really matter. They're all very different themes. And uh, you can also, if you if you get super excited, uh, you can go and see, I think that we've, we've done this uh, three day, uh, nine times. And uh, I believe most of them, not all, but most of them are in your um, Magnetic Mind Masterclass University. So you go, you know what, that was a great day. I want to do the other two right now. Uh, you can go and jump straight in and you can, you can do it. And, uh, and that sounds good. Hey, very cool. Very, very, very cool. So uh, day one is all about structure. That's what day one is all about. Day one is all about understanding structure. So the, the second day is about understanding and shifting resistance, about being it to seeing it, to see it. And this is a very, very important thing. You will not have uh, anything in your life that isn't accepted by your unconscious. If your unconscious says no, you won't be allowed to keep it for very long, whether that's love, uh, a healthy body, uh, with whatever that is. And by the way, if you're new, uh, I use the word unconscious to represent what some might call subconscious. And it's all just different, uh, you know, it's all just different words for the same thing. The unconscious, your automatic processing, the part of you that you can train, that, that speaks, that listens, that writes, that walks and uh, that does everything that was once conscious and, and now has automated it. So it's a very, uh, a very important part of you. And, and it's just so important to understand that, is that you, you, your unconscious takes everything literally, okay? It's, uh, it's a part of you that, uh, that, that can be trained, that was running the show between ages zero and four, and is is there it's there as your ally and it's there as your support however if it got incorrect training it doesn't change the training okay for example if you were born into a family uh smiley's turned into a cat that's hilarious that's hilarious that we just have i'm just going to add his pin uh smiley is now a cat <laughs> it's so good we should <laughs> We should one day just all keep talking and be part of the session, but put our animals on the camera. <laughs> Funny. All right. Well, wait, Smiley doesn't even know. It's funny. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was talking about something serious, wasn't I? 
so so you're unconscious if you were born into a into a family uh that uh hits everyone on the head with hammers every time they wake up you wake up and you get knocked on the head with a hammer and uh and that's just how your family is as you grow older you might go and you know stay at a, a friend's house or you know you might go on school camp and and wake up in the morning with your hammer and whack yourself and everyone look at you like what are you doing and what would happen is you'd eventually realize, oh, not everyone whacks themselves on the head with a hammer. So you would go out and you say, you know what, I'm going to try to stop doing this. And then you might find yourself unconsciously or, or for some reason feeling like something is missing. Where, where is that? And you might decide that you might need to just hit the wall a bit. And that is because the, the unconscious doesn't decide whether something's good or bad. It doesn't decide whether it's good or bad. What, what it's looking for is survivability and viability. So it comes into this world and it says, okay, how do I survive? How do I survive? Uh, I need to make sure I have love from these two people that have created me or whoever's around me so that I get fed because I can't feed myself yet. I need to make sure I fit in and that I belong. And, and I also need to, need to realize that anything that I've already done is far more survivable than anything in the future. But not really. Only to the unconscious is the past safer than the future. Does that make sense? And, and here's its logic. It says, we've already survived this. We know this. This is a game we've played. We understand the rules here. We don't know the rules over there, so that's scary. And this is why you'll see someone go into one abusive relationship into another, you see? Or they will never never be able to have more money than their family ever really had they just they just find their way to about the same level of um experience and and i remember a coach said to me one time she said chris you might choose different uh, uh you might choose to do different things but you'll have the same experience and i was like what do you mean she goes well think about it in in your financial uh situation You've chosen to go a different way to your family, but you're still experiencing yourself as a workaholic. Uh, you don't have abundance. You see, so the experience was the same. You see, you didn't actually escape the experience. And she said, you show me your relationships and then show me your parents' relationships and the amount of love that's available. You might be saying you're doing different things, but you look at the experience. And so one of the things the unconscious says is it looks at what is safe by looking to, to the people that created it, looking to the past and tries to figure out what is safe. And so here's, here's the only thing you need to know is whatever you want to create in your life, the unconscious must be able to say yes. The great thing about the unconscious is that it doesn't have discernment. Whatever you give it, it takes as true. It's not sitting there going, is this right or is this wrong? It's just whatever, whatever is given, it goes, well, that's safe. So, so a way that you can use one of our processes or a way that you, you, we really train the unconscious is by getting results in advance. Getting results in advance. So, and, and what that means getting results in advance is that if you close your eyes and experience something as true your unconscious doesn't know that you didn't live that you might think well how does that happen chris well it happens because of where the unconscious gets its information from okay all information to the unconscious starts with images, sounds, feelings, sensory experiences in, in your mind. You see, all that this is when I touch something, all that is, is a way for me to get information here. I have these peepers, these little lookers, and all they're doing is getting light and creating information here. When I use these things and get some, some sound information, it's just creating information here. From here is where the unconscious gets its information. Does this make sense, everybody? So by using visualization, which is, which is visual, auditory information, sensory information, you can have the unconscious 
experience and results before they've actually it's actually happened in in our third density does that make sense now can i get some yeses where's where's the where's everyone at does this make sense let's get some hands up some yeses are we good with this is everyone happy we're diving right in today there we go there we are that's more like it <laughs> that's more like it very good so so what what what's really interesting about this and, and about our, our work is that when I ask you to close your eyes and experience an end result, okay, your unconscious experiences that as happening. Therefore, it gives you all of its resistance. You see, that's not fake resistance. We're not problem solving. This is one of the biggest things we have to understand. When we go into an end result in our mind and fully experience it, then our unconscious tells us all the reasons we can't have that. You see, that is completely opposite than us just sitting here and going, hey, what's wrong? What's not right about you? What do you need to fix? Do you see that? That's not what we're doing. We're going into it and then we're, we're letting your complete consciousness tell us how it feels scared, worried, anxious about that. Does that make sense? And then that's where we can do recode. So, so that's what today's about. Today's about understanding how to have your unconscious connected to your end result so that it can manifest. Now, last thing, why is recode uh, and everything so important? Well, first, once we get into a structure where we're, we're not um, fixing and we're creating, because the unconscious takes everything as true and literal, okay? Now, in the certification, we, we go into much more detail about the unconscious, but uh, for those of you just in masterclass, uh, you, you know, that we'll, we'll cover the basics. The, the unconscious takes everything literally, okay? So if you, whatever you say to it, there's also a second or silent instruction that goes with it, okay? So if you sit in a meditation and you say, uh, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich, I am rich, but you, you have nothing in your bank account. What are you really telling? What is your unconscious really getting? That you're a liar. That, you, that you're a liar. And that you're scared of looking at the truth. Isn't it? That's what you really get from that. If you, you know, because it's not, it's not true. You, you, it's like you're trying to... Um, you, you, and it is, it's you trying to fake you out. Does it make sense? Well, does everyone understand the metaphor of fake you out? It's like trying to, it's trying to pretend and you can't because you know the truth, you see. And so when, when, if I, and I always use this metaphor, if I'm sitting down and I, and I'm visualizing being a standing up person and I stay sitting down and I say, I am standing up, I am standing, I'm a standing up person. And then if I stay sitting down, what have I told the unconscious? I'm not a standing up person. It doesn't matter how much meditation I do about how great it is to be standing up, right? It doesn't matter. I then, I then collapse all the information because I stay sitting. You see, I do care about um, making money. I do care about losing. I do care about this. Then you don't do it. You see? And, and so the unconscious takes everything literally, you see, because it, it, is, it, it is you. There's no way to, to fake it out. There's no way to hide something. And uh, there just isn't. Now, when you tune into the end result, like we, we teach you, you you're, you're saying this is a result in the future. You're not trying to lie and say that it's here now magically. You say, this is what I'm going to create. And this is how it will feel like. And then the unconscious says, well, here's all the reasons why we're scared of that or worried about that or unsure about that or doubt ourselves. And then we go, fantastic. Now, the problem is with many other uh, ways that you have been taught to, to uh, create shifts or, or develop yourself, is that when you see these resistance, uh, you know, these challenges, these upset emotions, you've been taught to go and try and fix them. 
Chris, I need to get rid of my self-sabotage. Chris, I've got too much fear. Chris, I've got too much anxiety. Yeah, it it's, makes sense. It, it's, you've been told to go fix it. So everyone, make sure you really, really get this. When you go to fix something, what is the silent instruction that you give? Yeah. That it's broken or needs fixing or not right, you see. And, and then people wonder why they keep doing meditations or they keep going to a different doctor and, and they keep on finding more problems. They wonder why. Why is it that I've gone to a naturopath and an osteotherapist and I've gone to an allopathic medicine and a, and a Chinese medicine specialist and next one and next one. Why is it that I've gone to all of these different people to solve this problem? And it's been 10 years, Chris. Why is it that I still have the problem? And it's, it's so obvious. It's that your unconscious has been trained that it has a problem. You told it it's a problem. It doesn't know what else it can be. You've given it no other instruction other than you are the problem. We are the problem. We need something outside of us to fix us. We aren't powerful. You see that? That's, and that is the absolute tragedy in 95% of really well-intentioned healers and coaches and self-help ther therapists. It's an absolute tragedy because their modalities are amazing and their healings are amazing and they're, they're brilliant, but they forgot the absolute basic your consciousness creates. The consciousness creates. When you tell your consciousness you're broken, it goes, okay, I'm broken. Thank you for the instruction. That's what I am. You've given me no other instruction other than I'm broken and I can't fix it. I need something outside of me. So we better always have something outside of me helping me. What other option does it have? Isn't that interesting? What, what other option does it have with that instruction? And it's really nice to just acknowledge that. So, so, so it has no other option. That is all it's been instructed by you. And, and we never got told. And so, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you can't beat yourself up or anything. It's just, oh, well, right. That's, that, that's true. And when I first learned this, there's no wiggle room in this concept. Hey, it's just, it's just, that's what it is. Your consciousness creates, your focus creates. You can do the exact same behavior in a completely different focus. So you can go, I'm, I'm choosing to be healthy and vital. And you could get the direct instruction that what you need to do is Ayurvedic medicine. Fantastic. That is in service of what you're creating. But your end result is to create. You didn't walk in to get that medicine or that healing in a thing in, in an idea that you need to fix you see so that is why day one is structure structure is the most important that you start with the intent of what you want to see manifest and very clearly the difference between the problem orientation and the creative orientation it's so simple to explain the problem orientation is focused on something going away and the creative orientation is focused on bringing something into being. That's it. That's it. When you create, you're bringing something to being, a healthy body. When you are problem solving, you are trying to get rid of a disease. And you can't be in both. I just got chills. It's probably the best way I've ever explained it. That's it. You see? You can't be it. You can't be in both. You're either bringing something into reality or you're focused on trying to get rid of something. That's it. That's it, isn't it? That's it. And that's what day one is. Day two today is going, okay, now we're focused on bringing something into being. If it's new, your unconscious hasn't, doesn't know if it's safe or not. So we need to have the unconscious completely be happy with that to be manifest and for you to receive it. However, 
we must rise out of the unconscious and create changes. You see, we, we can't go into the unconscious to fix it because it's too literal. So we must rise up and out, create changes from a place where we're source code and then, and then bring it down. So that's what today's about. So welcome, uh, welcome to day two. Welcome to day two. I'll get the notes up and we'll get ourselves started. So the goal is uh, that we want to have a flowing structure, a flowing structure. Now, a flowing structure doesn't mean that there are no, and I'm just going to share uh, the notes here a little bit. Actually, I don't need to share the notes, but I will be. I'll show you how it's going to look. I will be sharing the notes, but these notes are quite, quite small. Um, so I might just, just read some out. I'm sure you guys, oh no, it feels right to have them up. I'll leave it up. Okay. The flowing structure. Okay. A flowing structure doesn't mean that there's not a stick or a boulder in the way of the stream. Okay. It doesn't mean that the, that the stream is completely straight. It just means it's flowing. And the flowing structure means that the, there's no opposition, that the, ward, the, the way that everything's set up is the way. Okay. Yesterday on my recode, I talked about a great metaphor of setting up the right structure is thinking about a trampoline. Where you put your focus is like where you put a bowling ball and you are a tennis ball. Wherever you put the bowling ball, the tennis ball will roll to. That's what it's like with your focus. Wherever you put your focus, that's where you will roll to. Does that make sense? Yeah. You will roll there no matter what. And most of us put our focus on, well, how do I fix myself? And so you'll just roll to ways to fix yourself. And that's what life will be about. So, so we, we, must, we must think about it like this. So to, to get into the right structure, it's all about focus. Now, isn't that simple? That's it. That's it. A creative structure about bringing something into reality. Problem orientation is about removing something. And it's all about focus. But it is very difficult. It is very difficult, you know, it just, it's very simple to explain, isn't it? Who agrees? Simple to explain, stay focused on the end result and, and take action towards that. Yeah, Chris, but then what happens when you get a diagnosis? What happens when you, you know, you lose money? What happens when, yeah, 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 all these, what happens in the real world? Yeah, it's easy to stay, yeah, I'll stay focused on my end result and, and here, but, but it's actually a very difficult thing. So to do this, you switch your focus, you be it before you see it, okay? And what that means is that, you already have uh, set in that end result and you already are happy that you can have that. You be it before you see it. It's already allowed. It's already allowed. The flowing structure has no identity resistance because the identity is the same. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yesterday's session was a good one. Who was on it about um, playing a game, making your choices a game? Yeah. Thanks, Regina, you were on. Yeah, so so fantastic. It was a great session. Make it a game, you know? And uh, if you missed it, there's a replay. There's a replay. So you arrive at success and failure feeling the same because your consciousness creating, you're much bigger than it. And just because you took an incorrect action and didn't get the result you want, failure is just not meeting an expectation that you thought. That's all failure is. And so, you know, failure is just a stepping stone towards mastery. <laughs> And, and so you don't get upset about it. It's like, oh, that's, it's meant to be. It's, it's part of it. You can't not do it. You know, you watch a kid learning to walk, you know, if they gave up the first time they fell over, all of us would be crawling around on our butts. <laughs> so, so this is, this is the key. Hey, the key, the key is to be focused. And so the metaphor we use here uh, at Magnetic Mind, obviously is to become the magnet. Looks a bit weird with the black behind me like that. Um, so it's, you become a magnet. Now, to become a magnet is that, you know, you take in the right action and it seems that things are attracted to you, but, but and honestly, you're just not repelling them anymore. You see that? You already are a magnet for it, but your unconscious repels it. You say, I can't have that. That'd be scary. I can't be that. I'm not good enough to have that. How could someone love me like that? I can't actually have that healthy body. It's scary. And there's so many things going on. And, and an example is, you know, if you put two different seeds in the exact same soil, uh, all, all, all that's there is already there for them. The same soil, the same water, the same sunlight, everything. There's just a different intelligence. You can't break and open that seed and, and see anything. You see, everything's created in the invisible. But two different seeds in the same soil will, will, will create uh, completely different, you know, completely different plants, won't they? And that's, that's you. So you change your, your, the way you are, you change who your, your focus, you change 
you're in the same universe you'll grow into a different tree that's what i'm really saying <laughs> you you'll be a magnet for it okay so today we're really focused on being a magnet now the truth is is you're actually always a magnet you just haven't been using it you see and you're blocked from a lot of stuff so in order for us to first get ourselves moving uh into becoming a magnet there are four what, what we use the word orientational uh, choices. Now, those of you who have done the creator course or you're in mastery, you'll know that in mastery, uh, well, actually, I might be uh, I might be letting the cat out of the bag for some people who are in it. The last session, we actually teach you how to create your own orientational choices. Okay. In Magnetic Mind, uh, we give you four orientational choices. Now, an orientational choice okay, is a choice that you can have now and in the future. And it orients you, okay? So orients means which way is are you pointing? Does that make sense? So you're oriented. I can be oriented this way. I can be oriented this way. So what orientational choices do is they, they point your consciousness in the right direction. Does that make sense? They, they, they show you how you're going to see life. Okay. And every one of these choices you can have now and you can have in the future. There's no waiting. It's not like if you're trying to create your dream home. Okay. You can't have your dream home right now if you're building it. You got to, you know, there's a time delay. You are building it. Right. And that's kind of the joy of it. But with the four orientational choices, you can have them all now, okay? They orient you. And the four that I've given you are the ones that I use every single day. And I do believe they're the most important. So I'll always take time uh, on uh, these sessions to go through them and explain them. Okay, these are in no order, okay? So the, the first one I'm explaining today is the, the 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 orientational choice of I choose the end result of being the predominant creator in my life. Mm. So when I choose to be the predominant creator in my life, I, I'm not saying I'm the only creative force in my life. Okay. You will have a spouse, maybe multiple spouses, if that's your choice. You will have kids, you will have friends, you will have others who are driving on the same road as you, okay? They're all co-creating this universe. There is a government. There are other people that vote governments in. There are, you guys get it. There is an infinite amount of other creators out there, okay? But your choice is to be the primary or predominant, meaning you are the main creator in your life, meaning when other people's creations interfere with yours, you come back, you observe the new reality, and you recreate what's most important for you, and you take action. You are the main creator, but we must not ever think we're the only creator, okay? Just because, uh, you know, your, your spouse cheated on you, uh, there are things that you maybe overlooked in their in their absence or in their um, character, but also they created it too. Does that make sense? A lot of times we can, you know, be taught or instructed by others. Well, we must have created everything. Sometimes you didn't. Sometimes you didn't. Sometimes, uh, so for example. Um, there are many, many people frustrated with uh, with government policies. They don't line up with maybe theirs, right? They get frustrated. You didn't create those policies, did you? That's not you didn't. That's not you, but you create your reaction to them. Does that make sense? You create your response. You create what you're going to do next. You you can't ever have anyone try to. Well, you must have created those. We you, you did it. <laughs> you know you you might not even have voted that organization in. Does this make sense, everyone? So the first choice is you are the predominant creator in your life. You always have this choice that you create how you want things to be. 
okay? You can have it now, you have it in the future, and it's a, it's a great choice. When I close my eyes and tune into being the predominant creator, I see uh, myself as, as a wizard, as a unified field. I see myself made up of billions of little droplets that have created a body and an identity and a life and a world and a day. And I see that and I experience myself completely as the creator. And I acknowledge everyone else as a creator too. Cool. Fantastic. Uh, also, sorry, last part that's important in this statement, in my life, in my life, your kids uh, are the predominant creator in their life, you see, you as a, as a mother or a father, you get to be quite a predominant creator up until a certain age, and then we all, and it's different for every child, when they become the creator for them completely, and it's important that you recognize Every other person has free will. We can never have a choice that takes power from another person. They have choice to engage in whatever life that they're choosing to, and you have a choice to give them whatever education and instruction and help that you feel you want to give them. But at the end of the day, their choice about what they're doing, your choice about what you're doing. And that truth can be heartbreaking, can't it? but it's just the bloody truth and you can't steal power from someone and expect them to still be powerful. <laughs> you can't say you're not powerful enough to choose. I won't let you be a creator of your life. You're not allowed to be sick. Can you feel the incongruence with that? It's like, I want to heal you. Is actually saying, I'm not allowing you to be in charge of your experience, isn't it? It's very, uh, a very mature way of looking at things, but difficult and much easier to sit here and talk about it compared to real life. <laughs> Just pre prefacing the fact that I'm not bloody perfect. Um, okay, then. <laughs> uh, not that I was thinking that anyone thought that, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, we didn't think that about you, Chris. We know you're not perfect. <laughs> All right, good. Let's get to the second one. Uh, the second one, I choose the end result of living a life I love or loving a life I live, whichever way sounds nice to you. This is just choosing to love it because uh, you, can, you can have the, uh, the same life and uh, you can do the same things and you can choose to, to love it and, um, and that's great. Or you can choose to get frustrated by it, but it's the same life. Uh, it, it doesn't change. Your results don't change by being frustrated about something, you see. And, and by just getting and just saying, hey, I choose to, to live a life I love, it doesn't change that you still got to do your taxes or you still got to, you know, do the things that need to be done. It's just choosing to orient in a way that you love it. You only get it once. One thing I always say to people is I'm like, take a breath right now, you know, like really just <sighs> just breathe it in. And just know that like, you know, right now, you'll never get this, you'll never have this moment again, you'll never be this young again, it's moving forward. So you may as well choose to love it because choosing to get worried about it or anxious about it or pissed off about it does nothing but steal those minutes. True? Is it true? It does nothing to steal those moments. But please don't get into any sort of uh, uh, misguided assumption that if you choose to love it, then the results will change because <laughs> they won't <laughs> you know you, we know how results change and it's not just because you chose to you know I, I i saw this really um silly post once and it was a coach um, instructing her followers to look in the mirror and tell tell all of her uh, her body parts that are fat that she loves them and then and that's a, that sounds fine, doesn't it? Until she says, and by loving them, you'll lovingly have the felt the fat uh, melt off your body. <laughs> I was like, gee, I don't really think that's how that works, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and so, so please don't get misguided. It's just about choosing because why not, right? Hey, what? Why not? Why not to choose a life you love? Um, it's, why not? What, what better option is there? 
Okay, uh, so the, the next one is, is I choose health and vitality. Uh, I choose health and vitality. So the, the choice of, of, of health and vitality brings you into creative power with your health and energy. And the, the reason why I've put this in my uh, orientational choices is that uh, I can choose health right now and in the future. And I can choose vitality and energy right now and in the future. I can choose to have it. I can choose to experience myself as healthy. Even someone that has a diagnosis is still 80, 90% healthy. I can acknowledge many aspects of me that are healthy right now and, and, and really experience it. And as I experience and choose this, like actually choose that I have health and vitality, well, well then my body gets the instruction that that's what I want. And again, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't just more health and vitality. True, like why wouldn't I want to every single day teach my consciousness to focus on creating health and vitality and that I already am health and vital right now. Does that make sense? Can you see how that all of these are just orientational choices? They just things you can have now and things you can have in the future and they orient you. They, they point you in the direction. They point your consciousness somewhere. You see, you, you need to point your conscious, you need to focus it somewhere. If you don't focus it, if you don't tell it what you want to create, or well, it's just gonna, it's just gonna create based off whatever misguided ideas it made up when you were two years old, <laughs> you know, and that's all it will do. So you need to, you need to focus it and point it somewhere. All right. And then the fourth one that I give you in uh, magnetic mind is to live your true nature and purpose okay your true nature and, and purpose jenny's asked can i choose to be thin and fit now absolutely that's just not an orientational choice and uh you know you you can choose it but it's not going to just happen now just because you choose it does that make sense jenny is uh you, you choose it, we've got to go create it. And so there's no need of trying to demand it. Now we say, this is what I'm going to choose to create, to be to be fit and, uh, and thin, which is fantastic. But it's very different to choosing health and vitality. Yeah. All right, so the, the next orienting choice, okay, is I choose the end result of my true nature and purpose. Okay, the the... The true nature and, and purpose is very, very interesting statement. Okay. So true nature, what is our truest nature? Our truest nature. In my opinion, the truest nature of a human being is to be a creator. See, my dogs don't try to create things. Other consciousnesses on this planet don't try to create things, but look at humans. That's a great book, Tim. Love it. Love it. Is, is a horse and a cow and a plant, they don't try to create. But you look at humans, what have we done? We create. We create tribes and art and businesses, and we create a money system as flawed as it might be, and we create education, don't we? We create. If you look at what we're mostly engaged in, it, it seems so obvious to me that humans are here thinking up ideas of how they want the world to be constantly. How we want it to be better. We want a new house. We want a family. We want an amazing holiday. We want a Christmas. We want a that. We want a this. We want an amazing Thanksgiving. True. So in my opinion, when we tune into our truest nature, our truest nature is to turn thoughts into things to turn the invisible into visible, to create what it is that we think is worthwhile creating. Okay. So truest nature. And anyway, I don't, I don't um, need it to be true, but it's a nice premise anyway. <laughs> and the premise works because if you choose to be a creator or choose to live your truest nature, which is to come up with whatever thing you think is worthwhile creating, your purpose 
is where you're applying that true nature. And that can shift throughout life. True. So, so your 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 true nature is that you're a creator, and your purpose is where you're focusing and applying that. Turn thoughts into form. Turn the invisible into visible. Take whatever these ideas are planted into the unified field. Nurture it care for it and watch it flourish and then go wow that wasn't there and we do this you know we create children and we create art and we create food and we create family and we create businesses and we create and so your purpose you're allowed to have more than one purpose you're allowed to shift and change it but i think i uh the the easiest way to to have a happy and fulfilled life is to create lots of things you love it's, I think it's very hard to be depressed if you've got a life full of all these creations that you love, you see? But, but choosing where you want to, to create can become really difficult. A little um, thing that you might want to do at some point is write down everything that you love to do. Just write down all the things you love to do that you can just do for hours that are just fun and, and, and playful, what, what things that you love to do and then look at your week and go, how much am I spending time creating those things? You know, I love spending time with my kids and I love making sure I have a, this and, and actually look at it. It's very, very difficult to be depressed if you have, or be sad or anxious if you have a life full of things that you love to create. There, there's a lot of studies on this, actually, um, that most uh, or, not, or not most, but many uh, there, there's definitely uh, chemical imbalances that create mental illness. That's definitely true. That That's definitely a thing. But there's also a lack of people creating lives they love that that plays a massive role in uh, many of the, the challenges we're having. And what they find is uh, once someone can focus on creating activities and joy and and community and time in their lives doing what they love that's no longer a problem they find that uh, a lot of times the problem is two hours to get to work eight hours in an unfulfilling job two hours get home make dinner clean go to sleep wake up repeat and it's like well no wonder you're depressed <laughs> you know it's like and and so it's a big thing big thing um very good very good So how's that for a little bit of an intro into the orientational uh, choices? Okay, so, so last thing before we get ourselves uh, into some exercise, so we're going to be coming down here and doing some exercises in a second, is a choice is something you choose to manifest, <laughs> some, something that you want to see in reality. So after we do our orientational choices, and I do these every day for a minute, I step into each one in my mind and I choose it and I experience it and I write down, you know, how I'm these things and I experience myself as those four. It takes me a minute to two minutes to do those four. After that, I have choices. So choices are things I'm having an absolute ball creating. They're things that don't exist that I'm wanting to, to choose and have in reality. So a choice is not a goal, a wish or a dream. It is a choice. Now, by a choice, can you feel the word? So a choice, it's like sitting down at a, a universal uh, restaurant where every chef who ever existed is available to you. And they say, you can have any food ever. And you've got choice. You see, a choice has an inevitable feeling in it. A choice is powerful. A goal is something that you're running towards. A choice already exists. You're just choosing it. Does this make sense? It already exists. You're just choosing it. So uh, everyone can have the four orientational choices. No reason, no excuse. We work on these um, four choices first because until you've pointed your life in the correct direction, there's no point trying to create lots of money or everything else. Like why would you want lots of money if you haven't chosen to have health and vitality 
Like, why would you want to have lots of money if you're not loving your life? Why would you choose a happy and healthy, a, a happy relationship if you're not being a creative force in your life? Does that make sense? So, so there's no need to go anywhere else uh, until you until you focus on these four. Okay, uh, and so this is the first step, and this is um, reorienting. I see David says, "I choose to live a life with unlimited choices." Well, there you go. You've got it. The problem uh, is, is all of us have unlimited choices. So David, this is for you, but also everyone. You can have anything you want, but not everything. Write it down. I can have anything I want, but not everything. And the reason why you cannot have everything is if you tried to have everything, you'd end up with nothing because you would have no time to in actually experience the things you would like. And, and the example is... If you are at that restaurant with unlimited uh, chefs and unlimited choices, and you said, I'll have one of every dish that ever existed, you, you would get a spoonful of maybe 50 dishes before, you, you know, you were full. True. You just, you simply cannot have everything. So really get this. You can have anything yet you can't have everything because by trying to have everything, you get nothing. You can't, you get no time to experience it. Does that make sense, David? It was a, it was a good little, it was a good little um, ping to have that conversation come through. And did everyone else get something out of that? And, and this is, this is so important to realize you've been given a conscious function and, and you get to choose. You get to choose whether you want to live in a van and travel around the country or live a corporate life or have a farm or, you know, go, go traveling nonstop, you know, and, and, or, or be a sportsman or be a musician or an artist. All of those are available. But if you tried to do all of them, you wouldn't get any of them. Let's get some hands up. Also, yeses for that statement because I think it is so important. So, so yeses, some hands up. Let's get some energy. Do you guys get that? That's a very important thing. Uh, 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 Ryan Holiday wrote a book, "The Ego Is the Enemy," and he's an amazing author, by the way. But I think it's a terrible title. Well, it's probably really marketable. But the the, the self conscious isn't the enemy. You were given it to make conscious choice uh, to choose which direction that you're going to go. So very important. Good stuff. Very important. Good stuff. So choices are, are crucial. All right. So we're going to start talking about conditioning the unconscious mind. But are we having a good day so far or a good session so far? Am I still pinned as the big video? I think I am. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool. And all my coaches, where are my certified coaches? Uh, how many certified coaches are here to... Uh, to be learning deeper how to explain these concepts. Do I have some people who are here for themselves, but also their clients too? Yeah, because uh, because learning. Hey, Jamie, good to see you here, you bloody rock star. That's awesome. And I can't wait to see you again in person. And, and so uh, it, it is very important if you are a coach is that you can be here listening for you, but also uh, maybe you want to gather things. Oh, that would be a nice way to explain something. I might put that in my next training and everything else. So, so very, very, very cool. All right. So conditioning the unconscious mind. So uh, I'm here on page uh, 44. I just want to see you guys for a bit. When I screen share, I can't see you. So I'm cycling through the pages. I'll look at page number two for now. It's nice to see your faces, by the way. Very cool. Oh, Sandra's here. Hey, Sandra. Nice to see you. That's exciting. I am so grateful for Zoom. I am so great. Hey, John, good to see you. I remember we did Recode last time. Awesome stuff. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Randall. All right, cool. I'm going to sit here saying hi to all my friends. It's always nice to see faces next to a name. Hey, Tanya. Hey, Mary. Adriana. Wow. Amazing. We've got an amazing group. So, the unconscious mind is a domain of feelings, okay? If, if your unconscious doesn't feel in alignment with what you're creating, it will sabotage it because it doesn't feel that it's safe. The unconscious does not know the difference between a thought about reality and the reality. It just takes each as the same. And as I explained before, that's because the input arrives at the same place. 
the unconscious doesn't know if that input actually came from something outside the body or if it was something made up in here. And, uh, and that, that's the key. And we all know this, we, you know, we know this, like you can, you can sit at a movie theater. Well, <laughs> everyone remember when we could go to a movie theater, can you guys do that in the States yet? We're still not allowed to, not allowed to, I don't think, I don't know. I haven't even bothered, but, but you'd sit there, you watch a movie and, uh, you know, consciously it's not real, but your unconscious will still jump at a scary movie. Right. And we all know about what happens with a sexual fantasy. It doesn't actually have to be happening for our unconscious to create all sorts of changes uh, about uh, inside our body about what's happening. Hey, let's be honest about that. So, so it's, it's interesting to get that. And that's your proof. That's your smoking gun. Does everyone know the metaphor smoking gun is a term that means there's no argument. The unconscious doesn't know if it's just made up or happening. You see, it, it can't, it can't tell the difference. Uh, and that's why you, you could do those things. So, it's very important that you get this. So there's a little quick exercise here. I want you to think about an uncomfortable, scary, or embarrassing story. Just something that didn't go well for you. Something that wasn't right. I remember I've got I've got uh, Mel's on here, and about two months ago, I uh, uh, I called her Melanie, and it was super embarrassing for me because Mel's been on my team for like two years, and all of a sudden I, I didn't call her Melinda. I said the completely wrong name, and it was super embarrassing. So what's an embarrassing moment for you? You know, like you get somebody you've known for a long time say the wrong name. What? And I just want you to think about that, okay? And uh, and just think about an embarrassing or an uncomfortable time. And just close your eyes and experience it for a second. Just, just hear, me, hear me out. Just, just do it, all right? And so just close your eyes. And I just want you to experience an uncomfortable, scary, embarrassing story, okay? And, and as you got your eyes closed, kind of relive it, experience it, you know? What, what do you notice as your experience? What do you notice as you experience this uncomfortable or, you know, it, it, you know just, just a moment in time? What do you notice? What do you feel in your body? What do you feel in your body as you go there? So for me, when I think about that moment, I'm like, I go there, I, I see Mel's being like, that's not my name. And I'm like, I'm like, feel, and I feel, I feel hot and flushed. I feel super embarrassed. I'm like, that's so, why would you say the wrong name? And so I feel, and so I feel it and you go, I can eat, I feel myself getting clammy. So think about it, right? And, and, and you know, think about that and go okay what did you notice so just let me know let me know you can put some in the chat box or you can write it down it's important <laughs> Mel was just like it didn't matter i'm like well it mattered to me <laughs> i still haven't forgotten it <laughs> Now, I want you to look at everyone here that's, and where did you feel it in your body? Okay, where did you feel it in your body? Feels weird, feels, okay. Look in the chat box and notice yourself. Can everyone agree that I'm not just making this up? That your unconscious does not know the difference between something happening and something that is just in your mind. Give me some yeses and some hands up. Is it, should we move on? Is this, a, is this a dead ringer true? Is this, there is no wiggle room here. True, there's no, there's no way that you can argue this point. True, there's just simply, there's no possible way. So the challenge is, now that we all agree on that, most of us, when we think about a result, then tell our unconscious how it's not going to work out. True. Hey, we visualize it not working out. And then what do we teach our unconscious? That it's not worked out because it doesn't know the difference between something that's actually happened and something in your mind. So when you picture it not working out, what did you just what did you just experience unconsciously that it didn't work out? So what did you just teach yourself? It didn't work out. So what does your unconscious expect? It's not going to work out. So what does it do? Throws up resistance. Says, well, why would we go there? You see that? This is exactly why it is so important 
to learn how to get your consciousness engaged on the successful completion of the end result that you want. You see that? Because the unconscious doesn't know the difference between something that just actually happened and something in here. I'd love to get a couple shares on what I've covered uh, up to this point. So who's got something that they've that's landed with them that they think was a was a good thing that they would like to jump on and, and share with the group? I might take two or three. Do the little hand up if there's something this morning that you'd like to add. Uh, Regina, you can go first and uh, see if anyone else. So Regina, what's been uh, interesting? And then Siddiqui will go next. Are you able to up there? She is. Hi. So, hi, um, Chris, this is awesome. Yesterday was totally awesome. Thank you. Um, the first thing I wanted to say, when you said the four main core choices, mm. I was hit with a ton of bricks. I've been doing those for a few months now. Mm. And I realized for the first time that I was still trying to fix myself oh. because I felt like I needed to change my life in order to love it and in order to... Uh. So I, it was just like a ton of bricks and, and major, major clarity on, oh my God, like I need to love it now. You do. And there's no, there's no point not, there's no yeah. point not to, isn't it? It's the only one you've got. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Well, Thank you. well you are so that. welcome. You are so welcome. Great share. Thank you. Brilliant to hear from you. Uh, Siddiqui, I'd love to hear from you. Here she is. Hey, thank you so much for this, Chris. I just love it. I've been in the coaching industry for over 20 years. Yep. And so it's much of the up. orientation is removing it, fixing it, solving it, reinforcing that you're broken, reinforcing that you need the external yeah. someone to come in there and fix it. And yeah. this is just like... I'm like, will I ever have clients again if I let them know this secret? <laughs> but <laughs> well, that's funny. And I know you're joking, but it actually takes a heck of a long time for people to shift into the creative orientation. And as Regina just shared, old habits die hard. I think some mm -hmm. people at the beginning, I say, you're going to have to work with me for a year. They're like, a year, that's not. And then they get six months in. They're like, wow, I'm still not in the creative orientation. So, so Yes. Great yeah. share, hey, okay, and it, it's it. it's um you're welcome. It's funny, isn't it? it? It's like so obvious when you get told this, but I was just like you, and I went, "Oh no, <laughs> I've missed this," you know. But brilliant, now I've got this answer. Um, so it was a moment of both joy and also a bit of a bit of uh uh regret that I didn't get to know it faster, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've spent my career honing in on helping people release the resistance. And in the process, the focus is on what is the resistance? How is it showing up? What's the experience right. really diving into the resistance? And I'm like, oh no, I've had it backwards, but no, it's great. So thank you. It is great. Well done. And thanks. Great share. Great. And, and honored to have you here. So thank you for the acknowledgement and, uh, it really does show, you know, when someone's a lifelong learner and takes a beginner mind, then they get the information because many people after 20 years in an industry would be closed off to new new topics. So, so you know, hey, well done for that. That shows uh, some real flexibility, but also just truth, wanting the truth, always being a truth seeker. Do we have any men that want to share? I see lots of women putting their hands up. Uh, I'm going to go with Stoya and... Uh, and then uh, I'll get Jenny and Birde next time. But if there's any uh, uh, gentlemen out there that have got a, something they would like to add, no stress. But uh, here we go. Tim's next. And so I'll go Stoya now um, and, uh, and then Tim, and then we'll, we'll keep moving. Stoya, nice to, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Chris, and everyone here. I really appreciate this class. And I want to make one that I really missed it the first time I took it. The yes. choice, it's not the dream and go. Right. The choice, it's a choice that's already existing in a quantum field. We just have to take it. Yes. Not to go and create and dream it and work on it and, and pushing it. 
what I was doing is that I'm I'm creating it, but I thought I have to to do something. What I have to uh, work on my subconscious mind, clear my my thoughts, feeling emotions, and start to work on my acceptance to have it, and just have it, like clearing a, a lot of um, old clothes and get the only one you like to wear. That's and it's a lot of work. I can tell you that it's a lot of work, but it's worth it to do all the work. Fantastic. Great share. And, and, and dream and go. As, uh, as a mentor of mine would say, there's never anything to do, but there's always an action to take. And it's, it's yeah. yeah. Thanks, Stoya. Great, great share. Thank you. I'll Thank get to you. Yeah, there's never anything to do, but there's always an action to take. And it took me a long time uh, to remember and, and figure that one out. So I'll give you guys the insight is that life's an action sport. There's actually no way to not be taking an action. Even the idea of procrastination or inaction is still an action. So, so it, was a, it was a tricky uh, riddle. But once I figured it out, I realized there's always an action. You're always in action. You can't be in procrastination. But you don't necessarily have to do things that, that make sense to get somewhere. But there's always a correct action. And it's, it's very interesting. So one more share. Smiley and Birde, I saw your hands go up. But I'll just get Tim. And uh, then we'll get you guys next time. So, so brilliant. Otherwise, uh, we won't get on to our next contents. But thank you for volunteering. and. Uh, Tim, you you take us uh, take us away, sir. The one thing I want to add to this, I want to share this with everybody because I actually had a physical manifesting experience in one of the first uh, sessions you ever offered that I attended. Wow! And it was on the oscillating, the stuck, and the flowing mechanisms, <clears throat> and I had got it in my brain. And I started speaking it out loud that uh, there was this issue that was stuck. And I actually, oh, that solving, that solving problems in the industry that I work in is like rolling a rock, that it doesn't flow. You have to push it every time to make it move, right? Well, the irony of it is, is that I actually had a rock on my desk that I would push forward. And I did this for like three days. And I kid you not, I had probably the first worst three days that I've had in three years. Okay. And all I had to do was put the rock aside and push my one of my medicine balls across the floor in a flowing manner. And literally the dominoes just started falling again for me. I wanted yeah. you to know that. Very good. Because well. I knew you would like that. I do like that. And, and, you know, there's, there's many ways to teach the unconscious what we're looking for. And a, a physical metaphor like that is a very, very robust way to do it, Tim. I love it. I love it. Thank you for the share, sir. Appreciate you. You're and well done. All right. Hey, Anya, Danny, and Gazelle, I see your hands up. Uh, anything you need from us? Anya, Danny, Gazelle, let, let, let me know. I see the little hands up, but um, I'm not sure, not sure what you need. All right, uh, let's get ourselves moving. Very excited uh, to be here. Hopefully you guys are back and feeling comfortable. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of an exercise here uh, about the emotion of the end result. So uh, I guess... Uh, Hey, let's get the hands down, um, guys, unless there's anything that uh, that you need. Thanks, though. Good to see you, Robert, AJ, uh, Gazelle. Awesome stuff. I don't need, we don't have any shares right now. Unless you need something, let me know. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, always want shares. I'll let you know we've got time for some more shares, and uh, I'll remember your names that you wanted at this time. Fantastic stuff, guys. So the, the, the point of the emotion of the end result, because I feel like this can get lost sometimes, and I want to make sure that we all... Uh, all get it is the the reason why we do the emotion of the end result is to teach the unconscious that this end result has all is safe to have 
That's why we do it. That's exactly why we do it. And as we've already proved, the unconscious doesn't know the difference between something that has happened and uh, something that's just in our mind. Okay, it does not know the difference. Therefore, this is a really good thing to do. But that is the premise. Okay, that is the premise of doing it. So through visualization and meditation, you can condition your unconscious and you can talk to it. Feelings and imagery and metaphors, uh, just like Tim and I were talking about, metaphors and symbolism and imagery and feelings is the language of the unconscious. It's its language, okay? It, it, it needs the sensory input. So through visualization and meditation, you can condition the unconscious to have the ability to accept and receive the end results you desire. It's very simple, but most people want something way more complex. It uses open-ended questions to allow you to experience it and be it right now. This is step two in our five-step process, okay? So it's a very important part of it. This is how you can open to the wizard's gate, right? Which is the present moment uh, and, and to, to be able to receive wisdom and everything else. Okay, so we're going to do a uh, do one together. Let me share my screen and uh, we will do one together. So we're gonna start off with an easy one, which is the end result of living the life I love. OK, I'll guide you through and allow you to fully experience that being true and teach your body how it will be in this reality of loving your life. OK, I'll have you take a few breaths, few breaths and connect to your heart. We'll choose this result. OK, so we'll use our self-conscious to choose this result and then we will feel it. We will ask open-ended questions to expand the possibility. Notice what uh, comes to us and ask op other open-ended questions and then open our eyes. We can uh, every day, and I do this uh, you know, every single day, but I do it for about uh, two or three minutes in total, okay, in total. So uh, if everyone's ready, I'll, um, I'll guide you through it. It's very, very simple, okay? Very simple. Um, someone's actually mentioned in here, I get sleepy. So very good. So let, let's cover cover this. There's, there's a few things that you want to do. If you find yourself falling asleep, it's actually no problem. But if you do want to stay awake, a very simple thing to do is actually do the meditations with your eyes open. And when you do it with your eyes open, you just simply don't want to have any inputs. Okay, so Find yourself a, a blank wall and, uh, you know, just just gaze up, in, you know, at, at the wall. That's if you if you really have that challenge. Also, you might be in the UK. It might be a completely horrible time. And so you might you might catch the replay. Another thing is, is, you know, don't don't try to do meditation where you sleep. You know, don't try to do it. Uh, you know, in your bed and where you sleep and those sort of things, because your brain already thinks that's where you are. OK, uh, which is very very cool. All right, so let's have some fun with this. So when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes, please. Uh, or if you're getting sleepy, you can leave them open. <laughs> and, and as you do, just, just have a few uh, nice big breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. I love to experience myself connected to the all as though when I breathe in, the universe is breathing out. And when I breathe out, the universe is breathing in and just, and just choose to experience yourself like that. If you can place your intent in your heart and breathe through your heart and just, just feel connected for a, for a second. With your self-conscious direction, I'd love you to choose to live and experience the end result of a life you love. And say this in your mind as I say it out loud, I choose the end result of living a life I love. Notice what comes to you. What feelings, what images, what sounds. What are all the possible ways you can live a life you love? And how would it feel right now? How would it feel to be so in love with life? And if you don't know, 
Just make it up. What would you say to yourself being so in love with life? What would you think? How would it feel? I choose the end result of living a life I love. Loving a life I live. And just allow yourself to feel that. And now let's expand it. What other ways could you feel this even more? What are all the possible ways you could notice you could love your life right now? Just experience what comes to you. Choose it, feel it. And with every breath, just allow yourself to expand into this feeling the best you can. Just do the best you can. So what would you love to create to feel this even more? What would you love to create to feel this even more? What dance, what art, what sport, what family time, what food, what experiences? What would you love? What businesses, what travel, what contribution, what charity, what books what entertainment what would you love to create to feel this even more flood yourself with all the things you would love to create to feel this even more what are all the things that you would just love to feel this even more and when you're ready you can open your eyes you can write it down let me know how you went. Big smiles all around. Very good. Very good. Awesome, simple, easy. So we condition our unconscious. We go there, you see, we experience it. Our unconscious doesn't know that that's, that's, that that's anything but the truth. Does it feel good? The unconscious just experienced it. Well, and it should be, and it will become truth. Your unconscious is trainable. This is a very big thing. Your unconscious is trainable. When you, when you first learn to drive a car, you are very conscious. And then over time, you now sit in the car, change the stereo, take off, take off your top, talk to someone. And then sometimes you even forget where you've been driving for a few minutes. <laughs> you know, I get in the car and, and I go, why am I going this way to my wife? She goes, I don't know. I'm like, oh, I'm driving to the gym. <laughs> she goes, well, we're not going to the gym. I'm like, I know <laughs> because it's unconscious. Has, anyone, has this happened to anyone before? Yeah, it's unconscious. So you train your unconscious. So this practice of doing this is training your unconscious. And then guess what? like what happens with me in the car and you probably as well is all of a sudden your unconscious takes over and it's trained. It becomes your ally. Who would love to have their unconscious as their ally? If you train it again, instead of their enemy, hey, their ally on the end results they want to create. If you spend time in the end result in health and vitality every single day and teaching your body, how that's going to feel and teaching it and teaching it and teaching it and teaching it and teaching it. And teaching it eventually, you get to a point where you go, well, I don't need to do this. I mean, I don't, there's no difference. There's no contrast. <laughs> this is just my life. <laughs> is it true, everyone? So uh, it's very important uh, that, you, that you do this uh, every single day. It's, um, it's part of it. It's very part of it. And, and, there, and there's, there's reasons and science, and, and that's, that's why we're doing it. And, it, and the, there's a reason why I wanted to go deep, and well, not deep, but enough to share with you, you know, why... Uh, is so that, that everyone does it, you know, because it doesn't take long. So it's it's step one every morning. Now, what you'll see here is an instruction. Repeat this process with three other orientational choices. Uh, and, and Hannah does it longer than me. Everyone, uh, does everyone know Hannah? Everyone's had a session with Hannah before? So Hannah loves it. Uh, she loves this stuff. She'll spend three minutes per choice. And uh, I don't know whether I'm ADD or just faster, but I can't do three minutes on every single choice in 12 minutes. Like in 12 minutes, I've I, I've done 20 different things. So I spend maximum a minute in each uh, end result, three to four minutes in total. And uh, so what I'm saying by that is there's no right way to do it, is there? It's that each day, one of the first things you should do, and it's in our morning routine, is that you teach your consciousness how you want it to be. You, you, you are in control of it. 
it wants to it wants to get instruction from you does that make sense you do these first two or three minutes four minutes five minutes whatever it is until you're in the end result okay so whatever gets you in those end results then every day we pick two of our um, uh, other choices that we want to see manifest does that make sense everyone and we work on uh, the uh, on two others and you might do a full recode with another two uh, our attempt is most people should be able to go through the whole thing in 15 minutes but obviously if you spend longer in your orienting choices then it's all going to be longer does that sound good so we're not going to do the other ones uh today because um, i'm pretty certain all of you can do it sound good any questions any hands up for any questions on that uh, i think it's all pretty self-explanatory about the emotion uh on the end result uh speak now forever uh hold it in everyone's good simple easy okay we'll keep going good 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 validation good basics okay so some of us did anyone feel resistance to that end result anyone get any re 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 resistance see some people aj says yes i felt resistance Someone saying no when I focus, yes. So some people are saying very little, no. Some people are saying yes, great. There is nothing wrong with resistance. Nothing wrong with resistance. So when you get into your end results of your choices, your unconscious doesn't know the difference between something that happened in reality or something in your mind. Therefore, it will give you, it will show its hand. It will give you the exact uh, resistance to that. Does this make sense, everyone? They don't, it, do, it can't tell you the difference between it being in reality or in your mind. Therefore, it gives you the exact challenges it has with that reality. So if you go into the end result of you with a million dollars in your bank account, whatever your unconscious has that shows you uh, what how it feels about that is how it feels about that. This is why inner mind work is so vital. You see, this isn't, we're not doing something that's not in the field, not in the actual, uh, in the actual correctness of this, because the, to the unconscious, this is everything, you see, very important. So what is resistance? There's this miraculous uh, force out there that seems to be working against what it is that we want to create. <laughs> and, uh, and this force is called resistance. So when you decide to go for a reality, you step into the emotion that you'll find not all of you is 100% feeling good, okay? So a zero out of 10 resistance, okay? That looks like you are just lying back uh, on a raft, floating down the river, floating to the land of plenty. There's no resistance. The sun is the perfect temperature and you're just, you, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Zero resistance is you are doing it. You've got no problem. 10 out of 10 resistance could look like absolute stage fright. You cannot go up on that stage. You see, it could feel like you're trying to swim through peanut butter, which I could imagine would be very difficult. Okay. It's, it, you, you're not moving. That's a 10. A five resistance might feel like, you know, parts of you can move towards it, but other parts are fighting it. Okay. So, for any end result, it's likely you have some resistance, like even a one or a two. The idea is you want the resistance to be manageable. Okay, you want it, you want it to be manageable. I think that most of us will have some sort of uh, resistance to most things. Uh, it's just that shouldn't stop the action. Does that make sense? It just shouldn't stop the action. So resistance isn't a bad thing. Okay. It's just a previous creation designed to keep you from ending up in what the unconscious believes is painful situations. It was put there by you, for you, to stop you ending up in a situation you previously thought was dangerous or unsafe. This is because the number one job of the unconscious is to ensure you and your body survive, which obviously is a very, very good thing. So, if, oh.
¿verdad? If someone was struggling to lose weight and they're so frustrated and they try diet after diet after diet and they can't get it to happen and they're so annoyed and then they do some digging and they realize at age four they saw their mother get abused and they decided that being pretty and skinny causes abuse. So unconsciously, they decided that to be safe, you should, you should have more weight on your body. Was that decision a bad decision? It was just a three-year-old trying to figure out how to stay safe. Even worse, if the abuse happened to them, you see, you're a two-year-old, you see your father so stressed out about money, he puts all his money on the line, loses it, you lose your home, you have to go live with others, so stressful. So you make the decision, going for money is, 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 is bad, having money is, is bad, investments are bad. What is that? A, is that a bad decision for a two-year-old to make? No, so, so are they, is resistance bad? The elephant, uh, it's a metaphor where, where it's tied to a stake is a very, very, very good metaphor. So an elephant as a small elephant can get tied, unfortunately, by, by some caring human, I hope, to a, to a, with a little piece of rope and a small stake in the ground, and it will pull and pull and, and cry and pull, and it, 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 won't let, it won't pull it out. Then it turns into this big adult elephant big, strong, mum or father elephant ties with the same tiny rope and same little stake in the ground. Now this strong, capable adult can rip that stake out of the ground and it can go do what it wants. But it learned helplessness. It learned there was no point. So it gave up. Just because you couldn't handle it when you were four, five, six, seven, 11, 12, 21, 25, has nothing to do with your ability to handle something now. Just because it was the correct decision to just work hard when you were two, four, five years old, just when, when you were seven and you made the decision uh, that don't be seen because being seen gets you in trouble doesn't mean it was bad and doesn't mean it's still accurate today. Just because you had to become the boss and be the parent to your parent when you were nine years old doesn't mean that it was a bad decision or that you can't let someone else take care of you now, you see. It doesn't mean it was bad. It's a complete paradox. It doesn't mean it was a wrong or incorrect decision, but it also doesn't mean that it's the right one to continue with today. Does this, does this land and make sense with everyone? That it, it, it does, Resistance isn't bad. It's just a rule or a pattern that you chose at some other time in your life as the best decision to keep you the safest as possible. And, and you could have made a mistake, but that's the decision you make, you see. No one handed you that resistance, you see. It was a decision, unconsciously, superconsciously, or self-consciously, that was, that was a decision. It, it doesn't, it, it's not against us, it's always been for us, you see that? And once you, once you orient yourself to the position that you made the decision, I mean, the elephant wanted to save energy. Why would it keep pulling? You see, and why would it question that it can now pull? It just didn't occur. It didn't occur to the elephant that it could just now pull and go. You see, it didn't occur to it anymore. Was it? it wasn't even in its consciousness to realize, oh, I don't actually need that limit anymore. You see, and sometimes the person that we were creating the limits for doesn't even exist. You see. You know, just some, some kids laughed at us when we were 11 years old. That, they're now 50-year-old adults. They have no idea about it. And we're still holding on to the fact that we're not a good public speaker. <laughs> you see.
So, so what, what, what's true is we, we don't need to go on some archaeological scientific dig around your whole history. <laughs> that would take a while. We don't need to do that. And uh, we don't need to use muscle testing to go across past timelines and try to clean it all up. We don't need to do that. All we need to do is focus on what we're choosing to create and notice the resistance that's present and then remove that resistance. We're never going to be perfect, you see. The only resistance that we need to shift is the resistance that's in the way of the creation that we're wanting to see manifest. Any other resistance is fine. It can stay there because it's not that's problem solving if we go try to be perfect, you see. No, there's no such thing. The only thing we do is we focus on what we're creating, we engage in it, we notice how we uh, are resisting that being true, and then we shift that so we can accept our creation. Remember, the creative reality is bringing something into being. The problem-solving reality is getting something removed. We're creating, and in the act of creating, there's things that need to shift. It's quite brilliant, isn't it? I wish it was mine. Lots of amazing coaches have shared this with me, and I'm so honored to share it with you. So the, the truth is, is that, uh, well, actually, let me just make sure I get all of this. The safety mechanism from your unconscious can start to hinder your life because the unconscious decides that anything new is not safe. Okay, right. So the unconscious puts anything that's not been experienced as unsafe. So if, if you never were able to feel love or be loved, if it was unsafe to be loved or unsafe to be beautiful or unsafe to be rich, the opposite is deemed, uh, you, you know, unsafe. So to be rich, to be beautiful, it's, it's deemed as unsafe only because it's not been experienced before. It, it, it's illogical to think any of those things are unsafe. Okay, it's illogical, it doesn't make sense. But the unconscious isn't logical. It just says, this is the rules. This is what's kept us safe. So this is the way we're going to do it. Okay. So uh, that what happens is the unconscious puts warning signs in the form of uncomfortable feelings whenever you're about to go to do something that it deems is unsafe. And these these warning signs are stop. Do not enter. Do not go. Or sometimes it's a brick wall. You are not allowed here. You cannot go past this level of uh fat on your body that you can't hit you can't go past that that's dangerous there you can't go past this much money you can't go past this much love you can't this is it and the truth is just because it's new doesn't make it unsafe and we all get that logically don't we just because it's new doesn't mean it's unsafe in fact the current condition it might actually be more safe to be rich and i think it is and so in spite of the logic the unconscious just wants to give everything the same okay so the point of this is for every single one of us to understand that resistance is not an enemy that's against us. Does that make sense, everyone? It's not, it's not this boogeyman, boogie woman out there to get us. Self-sabotage is actually just parts of you disagreeing on what is actually the best and safest outcome. That's all it is. Self-sabotage is your conscious brain saying, hey, I'd really like this. And your unconscious brain saying, that seems unsafe. You see. So a uh, great question, says, uh, and I think I've explained it well, but I'll give it another crack, is that when you're in creation, you're bringing something to being. When you choose to bring something into be being and feel the emotion, you will feel resistance to, to that being created. So shifting that resistance in service of this thing uh, being created is creation. If you just went and focused on just shifting the resistance without then giving a creation of where it's going, Cesar, all the instruction that you're giving is we must just fix, which just creates a cycle of always needing to find more things to fix. So the key difference, again, is actions can look the same, but in a different structure, yield completely different results. And I'll give you an example of my life. When I chose just to create a business that I loved, and when I went for it, and then I shifted things, I had it. 
when I sat there going, I need to have the best money blocks, I need to shift all my money blocks, and I need to feel abundant all the time. And, and I worked on that. The only thing that came through next was more stuff that I needed to shift and more stuff that I needed to shift, you see. And so when someone has a health transformation with me, I have them focus on what they'll be doing with the health. So Dean, who regained his eyesight, you know, one of our core first big, big stories, and we've had many more since then, it's just, his, his is, you know, his is amazing. I never, ever, ever once talked to him about the fact that he was blind, ever. What we focused on was him working on computers again. We focused on him running on the beach with his grandkids. That's what we created. In order for him to run on the beach with his grandkids and work on computers again, he had to have eyesight. You see, so as we created those things, the eyesight had to had to shift so he could have that in reality, you see, versus sitting here going, I'm blind and I must fix it. OK, that's what I mean of being in in service of it. Does that make sense? Is there's an end result? It wasn't just I want to fix my eyesight. It was I want to create. I want to create these things, you see. And then as he wanted, he had to be able to see to be able to do those. So his body shifted to make that reality. Is, can everyone at least intellectually understand that you've got to create end results, not focus on just what's wrong? That's the key. Hey, that's the key. Correct, Vivian. Does that make sense? I saw Cesar, a few others were asking questions about that. I just want to make sure that that's landed. That's why we do these in-depth sessions, these basics. Awesome stuff. Good. Very, very good. And so there, there's actually nothing wrong with a lot of these other modalities when their actual change process. It's just that the, the way, the structure, the way that it's set up. So we are going to do recode, hey? We're going to have fun with recode. I want everyone to hear this. Structure is everything. Recode is, is just one modality to shift resistance. Structure is it. Structure is everything. There are many different ways to shift resistance. Recode's a very good one. Uh, and, and I think it's one of the fastest and best ones. But nothing works without the correct structure. Actually, if you saw the video of me bringing those two women out on stage, you saw that video before you joined the class. I brought them out and I did, I did the recode. You might actually notice that part of that session, I actually address all of those that are listening. And I say, hey, if you're watching this, if you're in the audience, Please don't engage with this. Every day I get someone that goes, ha, 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 ha. I did it anyway, and it worked. This guy just wants you to pay him money. Ha, 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 I'm so smart. And, uh, and they're wrong. They're wrong. Because the reason why I said do not just jump in and do the recode is before I done recode with those two women, I actually got them in the correct structure taught their consciousness and made sure it was right. And then I did recode. Everyone who just sat there and used the recode on themselves literally went, I've got a problem, that recode's gonna solve it for me. And they put the recode in the problem reality, you see? And I told them not to and people don't listen. So, you know, everyone creates their own reality, don't they? I told them not to, but they chose to not listen, thinking that, that I, must be, I must be trying to hoodwink them or swindle them or do something not truthful and so so here's the truth you can put recode in the wrong structure and it will it won't it will, won't work for you you put recode in a problem solving structure you'll feel nice changes and you'll just have to keep coming back for those nice changes and nice changes and then eventually you'll get bored of recode and you'll move on to emotion code or psych k or hypnosis and you'll keep finding the next one does that make sense Recode's a great transformational tool, but placed in that old structure, consciousness is, is what creates. Does that make sense, everyone? It's very important. Structure first and then, and then the change work. Yeah, very important. And, you know, it is sad and, and it's all right. You know, uh, people don't listen. That's fine. But, um, but it's, it's very good. And, and it is the truth. So you've got to get in the right structure. How do you know you're in the right structure? You're focusing on bringing something into being, not what you're removing, not trying to be perfect, not anything else. Just you're trying to create something. Okay. Creating a healthy body, creating running on the beach with your, with your grandkids, 
creating working on computers, creating a new home, create, you see what I'm saying? You're bringing something into being. You're bringing something into being. That's how you know. Whenever you focus on how you must be perfect or what you must remove or what you must shift or what you must change and all of that, you're, you're doing something else. It's not creating. It's not creating. And if you don't give your consciousness a creative end result, it will just take the uh, implied instruction, which is, all oh, right, so what we're supposed to be focused on, on how we're broken and how to fix it. Anyway, I'm a little bit passionate about it because learning that one thing, I, 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 I geez, I, I paid so much money to figure it out, that 200 grand and, and that just, that was, a, that was worth the whole bloody lot. <laughs> it's just that, that one thing, change your life, change your kid's life, change your grandkids' life, structure creates reality. Absolutely. All right. All right. So we, now with all that being said, let's do the recode, hey? Uh, let's, let's do that. <laughs> so the recode is fantastic. And, uh, and, and I absolutely love it. And uh, so, so, so blessed uh, to learn how to connect to the superconscious and, and do this, this process. So uh, where, did, where did the process come from? Well, uh, Colette Stryker, who's my, one of my best friends on the planet, we speak every single week for six years. Uh, well, actually, we haven't spoken for two weeks. She's just been on a holiday and then it was Valentine's Day. So we, we haven't spoken for two weeks, but we speak um every single tuesday we're, we're absolutely best friends and and that's quite it's it's quite quite something so we've supported each other through a lot and she she's incredible colette uh it created a method called the map method which was the first method method that actually uh taught me how to connect to the superconscious. colette uh is a psychotherapist and learnt from, uh, he actually passed away last year, Dr. Gary Flint. And Gary had a method that was based off trying to understand how he could teach consciousness to do EMDR and EFT, so emotional freedom technique or, or, or tapping, and um, EDMR. I, someone will, tell, will write in EDMR. And, and he was trying to understand how he could do that with his psychiatric um, patients. And what he realized is he could use a metaphor to teach the consciousness what needed to be done. And once he taught that metaphor, he only needed to give instructions and tune into the field about what should be shifted. So, so Gary was the pioneer, a Canadian, uh, Canadian man. His book, The Process Method, A Process Healing Method, The Treatment of Personality, is a very dense book. Uh, and for those of you who want to read it, good luck. But it's a very, I've read it multiple times, very good book. And uh, amazing pioneer. He brought that work in. And uh, Colette uh, mentored with him. And before he passed away, he gave all the rights to Colette to, to do the, to, to, to his work and, and everything else, which, is, which was just fabulous. Colette came into my life 2016 when uh, I was in a very tough position uh, after my best friend was killed in a, a motorcycle accident in Bali. Uh, he was my business partner and I, I really lost life, you know, and I'm sure all of you have gone through hard things. But for me, um, I lost millions of dollars. I, I had people suing me because I couldn't, we couldn't deliver products that we'd promised because he was the one running the services. Um, he was actually 15 years older than me and, and was my first mentor, brought me into self-development and these things. And it was just like, I'd lost my, my dude, you know, it's like my, my brother. We've been through so much and, um, it was really hard. I was in a really hard place. And, and I, I met Colette and it was very interesting because I was not interested in doing any new modalities or work at the time. Her name's Colette Stryker. She's mentioned in my book, S-T-R-I-E-C-H-E-R. And uh, she's amazing. And uh, oh, yeah, you, you guys will love it. Anyway, so, so the point is, is that 
I was in a really tough place. I wasn't interested. Colette wouldn't leave me alone. And I always joke about it. She wouldn't leave me alone. She was messaging me on Facebook and blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, we need to catch up. We need to catch up. Because one of her friends had told her that I was the Australian Tony Roberts. <laughs> and she really wanted to get her new method out. And I'm like, I'm not even Australian. I'm from New Zealand. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. And anyway, so it's funny. So, so, so what happened on my first session, I really want to explain is I was not into it. I'd done everything. She finally tracks me down in LA. I just finished the, the movie with, with Anthony Robbins, the rise up movie. And um, so she tracked me down and said, I'm in LA. I know you're in LA. I've seen it on your Facebook. Like it was intense. So, so we sat down at a cafe and uh, she explains to me how the super conscious work. And you couldn't have had a more frustrated person who did not want to do any personal development at all than me. And so she says, hey, Chris, well, we need something to work on first. Um, how about public speaking? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't have a fear of public speech. So what about spiders? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, guess I'm not going to be right for you. She goes, well, the, the, you know, there's got to be something you've got to work on. And I said, oh, uh, well, you know, my friend died. You know, but you can't change that. I think with my words, you can't change that. And she says, yeah, but I can change the grief. And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, whatever. So she goes, close your eyes, do this thing. And the most amazing thing happened. And I don't know if you remember your first recode. Who remembers their first recode? Is uh, it, it was just incredible. And it was, I had this grief and I was so upset. And she starts, she does the commands and I'm feeling nothing. And I'm thinking, this is stupid. And I'm sitting in this cafe in Venice, in um in in you know in LA just down from Santa Monica there and I'm sitting there and I'm going this is this is stupid and then all of a sudden I get this like pop that happened to my consciousness I start streaming tears down my face and I burst out laughing and I couldn't access the grief I couldn't access it it was so crazy I couldn't access it it was like wow so uh, what what happened next is I said this is this is amazing. Um, I need I need I need this. I need need to understand this. Need to know how how this works. So Colleen ended up flying to where I was living, which was in Tahoe, um, in in North California, um, right on the border there of Nevada. And uh, we worked together for a week, just doing literally map, which is which is her modality. And then for the next uh, two years. Uh, I did met with her multiple times a week and I coached her on her business. She had never had a business do more than $3,000 uh, in a month. Now she has webinars, everything else. She does a few million dollars a year. Just absolutely just a, a perfect team. What happened though about uh, four years ago is, is I, I really started to get uh, a new awareness. So the way that a map session would start and, and this is just it with love and gratitude and she knows that this is what I think and she disagrees <laughs> is uh, the way that the map session would start is it, you'd get asked what's so what's your resistance what are you having problems with and it starts off by asking what's wrong it starts off in the problem reality and so I made the decision after helping her grow her business that that I would uh, with using structure bring a whole new structure and uh, and bring it all together in a new way. Uh, and, and that's how Recode was, was born. It is the most powerful uh, system on the planet. And um, it's different to, to anything else that it's ever experienced. When I focus your consciousness first, I believe it is so freaking important that uh, even Matt misses it and even people I respect deeply miss it. I ended up going on a journey meeting three other people that taught me about super conscious work and, and that took it to the next level. The next person I met was Richard Bartlett, uh, who's, who studied uh, with Richard. I ended up getting certified uh, with Richard Bartlett and Matrix Energetics, which was absolutely incredible. Uh, he was the first person to start talking to me about uh, point A, point B, understanding that you first engage in different quantum realities. So I brought that in. So I took math, the best stuff I got from Colette, brought that in, brought it over. Then I met William Whitecloud, who's ever had an experience with William, maybe from me or someone else. I ended up working personally with William for two years, very expensive, but very, very worthwhile. And, uh, and William added alchemy uh, to, to my work and understanding a deep, deep, deep understanding of some work that I was already teaching, which was uh, Robert Fritz. So I've been teaching Robert Fritz uh, his work since I did a course called Dimensional Mind uh, Academy, DMA, DMA, Dimensional Mind Ascension. What is it? DMA. Actually, I can't remember what the A stands for. Approach, dimensional mind approach. I did DMA in 2008 and I'd been teaching that and uh, and he brought my awareness back to something I'd been teaching. Fritz 
Uh, we owe a lot of credit to Fritz for our work as well. And then a lady named Simone Wright, who brought intuition into my life. And Simone uh, lives in LA, and she's actually uh, got an amazing book called First Intelligence. But Simone, she's, she's the person who the LAPD ring, if they can't find a missing child, she goes into the field and tells them where, where the kid is. She gets paid to do that which is pretty good. So, so I brought all those people together and I, and, I, and I got the best from all of their work and that got, that's what Recode is. <laughs> that's what Recode is. So Recode is the best of me going around and studying with all of these people and bringing it into one roof. And the reason why I share all those people with you is I absolutely love and respect every single one of them. And uh, I, I want you to humbly know that everything I share with you has, is a combination of very, very smart people sharing it with me. And there is no restrictions. You get this from me. Uh, you can go share it, teach it, do whatever it is, add it to your work. If you like doing Reiki or you like doing other things, you add it to this and you go out there and share it. This isn't my work. It's our work. And uh, I wouldn't be able to share it if it wasn't for these amazing people. And uh, all that I ever ask is that when you get out there and share it, that I get to be someone that you acknowledge helped you on your journey. So uh, with all that being said, uh, love you. Let's get into Recode. It's, uh, it's really cool. And please do share it. Uh, if you do get certified, you, you will understand all of our, you know, 20 different ways that we use Superconscious from all of these amazing people. But also I think the thing that I've got that, that, you know, William said this to me, he goes, you're able to distill things in a way that just makes sense without the fluff. And, and I love that, you know, you, you spend years with William trying to understand and call it and, and, and bring it together. So anyway, I'm really proud of it. And I don't think that uh, there's anything else that you need other than what we teach here. Uh, but of course, if, you, if you've got a curious brain and want to go talk to some other people, you can too, because they're amazing. So the superconscious, hey, the recode. You can use the superconscious to treat and change any resistance that you have an end result you'd like to manifest. We do this mainly with the recode. Uh, as I said, we have over 20 different ways to work with the superconscious, but the recode is the one that uh, is the most profound. When we're using the creative structure, we trigger resistance into the active experience through structural tension. Your active experience is everything you're consciously and unconsciously experiencing right now. It is made up of thoughts, feelings, memories, desires, people, situations, and more. The recode works by changing all the instructions causing resistance, okay? The instructions, meaning what the instructions that you gave your consciousness at age two, five, seven, 10, whatever it is. This allows a different action to be taken. A good way to explain this is to think about an end result you've not been able to manifest, okay? Imagine it being at the end of a road. Because of past actions, the road is in disrepair and cannot be driven on you notice potholes and they stop you being able to move forward so what needs to happen you need to fix the road luckily because you created all this resistance and all the potholes you have everything that you need to fix it you can fix it change them as soon as you do you can easily drive down that road to what you desire put it a different way your superconscious can remember exactly how it created these potholes and where it put all of the dirt or the materials and can just put it straight back in the perfect way in the perfect order smooth them out so that you can go there see if you're walking with a dog you, you put it on a leash hey you, you know you, you put the dog on a leash or a lead and you don't want the dog to go a certain way that's exactly what your unconscious is doing to you it's put things in the way now, that's just like the elephant. Now you can actually go there. So how much you acknowledge and change your resistance is up to you. The process is about creating results you desire not being perfect. Okay. However, if the old pen is in the way of what you desire, I suggest getting new information. The old information was valid, but it's not useful anymore. You can be amazing with a sword, but it's useless in a gunfight. The yellow pages may have helped you to find a dentist in the past, but now you can just go online and search for one. It doesn't matter how useful the original was. The question is, will that help me in the future? I think of resistance like a vampire sucking the life out of what we want to create. As soon as we shine light on a vampire, it evaporates, vanquishes into nothing. With the superconscious recode, you can recode any resistance in your identity to having what you desire. You can be it and see it. You don't need to change your whole self fix the past or try to be perfect. You simply need to focus on what you desire and notice what's in the way. Once you determine what's in the way, you connect to your superconscious and change the coding, okay? 
So in 2019, I got an intuition that I would do a group recode. This had never been done by Flint. It had never been done um, by Colette and it had never been done. In fact, right before I did that session with the two women, I got told off by Colette. Group recode, not, it's not going to work, never going to work. But I did it anyway. And so what I know is that, uh, and now uh, and now Colette does group stuff too, and we, we both agree it's one of the biggest advances in this work because before that, it was one-on-one. -on -one. So the, how the group recode works, I'm going to show you it individually, but how group recode works is we create a unified field of everyone on the session and we treat that. What we still don't understand is how the replays work. So who's done a replay and it's worked? We don't know. We just know that people take them, they do the session, they connect to them, and they tell us that amazing shifts happen. We think it's a morphogenic field. We don't know if we're shifting timelines and going into the future and noticing who would be there in the future. All that we know is it works. And it seems to be the oldest replays who have been used the most amount of times are the most powerful. The more consciousness, uh, more different consciousnesses engage with it, seem to create more powerful recodes. Meaning if you go to your library, go back to the ones 2018, 2019, uh, you, you'll, you'll probably have some very, very, very uh, transformative experiences. So we brought that into existence and uh, the Magnetic Mind Masterclass was, was born uh, in 2019. So originally, uh, so we like to say that this process is like that you have a river of desire. At the end of the river is a land of plenty with everything you'd love to see manifest. Okay. And, and you're in your current reality in the current of the river. You see that your current reality is a river because time is always moving. It's a current. It's a flow. Sometimes your flow looks more like it's been frozen. <laughs> it ain't flowing. So as you're moving towards what you desire, sometimes there are boulders in the way and stop the flow. And sometimes they can actually connect into concrete and there's no flow at all. However, again, these boulders are easily removed. They're easily pushed away. And, and the reason and why we do that is we remember how they were useful and we just smooth them out. We just push them away. It's just simple. It's easy and gentle and you'll experience profound shifts using it. It's so amazing because in the superconscious, in the field, everything is movable. So occasionally the resistance is too much to move in one session. Very important, very important. Sometimes the resistance is really just far too big. It's a, it's a big boulder. There is too much of the identity caught up in the resistance being there. Okay, like maybe the boulder is like the size of a car. So instead of trying to remove it in one go, we simply ask the superconscious to chisel away a small piece and then come back to the next session. Chisel off a small piece and then come back. After a few sessions, we'll be able to, to get there, but it'll be much easier. What am I trying to say is if it's a big thing, take your time. If you try to remove something massive all at once, you can actually just flood your unconscious with pain. So just take it a time, okay? So you know when a recode has worked, when what was stopping you previously is no longer a problem or stopping you. How do you know it's not stopping you? The river's flowing. The river is flowing. You are moving towards what you want. Does that make sense? You are moving towards it. I love you guys. So I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, we're about to jump into the recode. We're about to uh, actually demonstrate this work. If you're interested in, in having a recode session with myself or someone on my team, or, or you'd like to know more about the courses, Magnet Mind Masterclass, Superconscious Mastery, uh, the, the certification, if you'd like to know about any of these, there, there's a link below where you can inquire to get more information. I love you so much. Thanks for subscribing. And thank you very much for watching. Stay focused and stay magnetic. Bye for now.